Hey everyone, welcome to It Pays to Fear God. I'm a weather renomeran, and in this video, let's talk about how to read the Bible. It features in every single video we make, so we should get to know a little bit about how we should read it to achieve the best results. You know, over my journey by in reading the scriptures and looking at all different kinds of topics through what Jesus, the apostles, and the prophets, and God Almighty have said, I've realized that there are certain ways that the Bible can be read that will allow us to really dive into the deeper meaning that the scriptures was preserved to give us. If we read 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verses 16 and 17, it was preserved to learn doctrine, instruction, and so on. So the best way to learn that is what we're going to be discussing in this video. So I'm just going to give you several tips that will allow you to understand how to read the Bible better. Firstly, focus on the stories. That's the number one tip. The reason why I say this is because if you look at the Bible, everything is based on the stories. For example, you probably know the parable of the mustard seed that Jesus Christ told in Matthew chapter 13 and verses 31 and 32 about a man going to sow a small seed and it gradually became a huge tree. It looks very simple, but if you look at the kingdom of David and how it gradually developed, we can see that that was where Jesus Christ took that idea. And if you read the book of 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel, you can watch as the kingdom of David gradually develops, whereas the kingdom of Saul gradually deteriorated. As it was stated in 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1, and there was a lo long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But the house of David grew stronger and stronger, but the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. So that gradual increase in the kingdom of David was exactly what Jesus Christ was talking about in the mustard seed parable. And then he was using that to describe how the kingdom of God in the last days would also be set up, according to Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. Then secondly, read the Bible topic by topic. You see how I mentioned Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2 and Matthew chapter 13 and verses 31 and 32. Those are two completely different texts in the scriptures and they're not in the same testament. But in order to understand God, we can't just read it book by book or chapter by chapter. No. We take a topic, for example, and we've taken many topics, dwelling in God's estate, who is God, who is Jesus Christ, so pretend you want to learn who is Jesus Christ. It's not just by reading the four Gospels of Jesus. No, those will give you a basic understanding. But you have to go to the Old Testament to understand what Jesus Christ came down to do. How he was supposed to be like an offering for sin, according to Isaiah chapter 53 verse 10. And how he was supposed to be the ultimate sacrifice to save humankind from sin. And if we don't understand the Day of Atonement in Leviticus chapter 16, how the priest would go once a year to offer that special sacrifice for the congregation, we wouldn't understand the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It's as if he just suddenly came down and then he just died and then he went back up. But if we look at it in the context of the Old Testament, then it makes perfect sense. So we have to read things topic by topic. Look at a topic and then go through the whole Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, and look at where that topic fits. And continuing on that, the tip number three that I have is that we should make sure that if we're looking at any doctrine or lesson we can learn in the Bible, like, for example, many people talk about the fact that they're going to heaven. Look at it in the stories. Did people Was the idea of going to heaven in the stories? They look at it in the prophets. Was that inheritance for all God's children mentioned? Then go to the statements of Jesus Christ and the apostles. If you can't find whatever theory you're looking at in all those four different things, the stories, the statements of the prophets, the statements of Jesus Christ, and the statements of the apostles, then you should not be believing in that theory. For example, if you read Psalm chapter 37, verse 11, it says that the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. And Jesus Christ repeated that in Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. So, for example, I already just took, it was mentioned by David, who was a prophet, and then I, it was also mentioned by Jesus Christ. And if you look at the stories, it talked about how we would be inheriting the earth. There was no such thing as we go to heaven when we, you know, die. It was only the apostles who were supposed to be in that class. And obviously that was, that entire idea was brought 
when Jesus Christ came to this world. But, read Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, God knew it from the foundation of the world. But the fact of the matter is, we need to look at the whole Bible, the stories, the statements of the prophets, like in Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, then the statements of Jesus Christ and the statements of the apostles. We need to find whatever we're looking at in all those four for us to know that that theory or doctrine or whatever it is, is correct. Then also, try to consider the historical context of the scriptures when reading it. Many people, they just read it out of context. So certain things that happen don't make any sense. For example, when people are going to war on the scriptures, it's like, why are there so many battles? Why are there so many wars? Whereas in those days, war was pretty common. So that was why people like David, it wasn't inconveniencing or weird to be going to war against the Philistines and, and killing people and all that. So when we look at it in the historical context, it begins to make sense. Also, if we look at the Pharisees, for example, the debate between Jesus Christ and the Pharisees, why they had the debate. Who were the Pharisees? You can't understand why the Pharisees hanged Jesus if you don't know the fact that they owned the platform. They were pretty much the leaders of the Jews, and they presided over everything, and they kind of worked with the Romans to govern the land. So this historical context, the way life was, which you need to know if you want to fully understand the scriptures. Then study the word of God like a textbook. Don't just say, okay, let me listen to one chapter of the Psalms today and one chapter of the Psalms tomorrow. If you are studying in university, you spend hours looking at all different kinds of things, doing all different kinds of research. You need that kind of time, zeal, and research in the scriptures if you want to really understand how everything connects in the scriptures. It's not just about listening to one chapter in the Psalms. Try to look for any opportunity to study the scriptures. If you work, for example, if you're driving to work, you can listen to the scriptures. Or if you're generally doing anything that doesn't require you to really think, washing the dishes or whatever, then you can use that opportunity to listen to the Bible because what it does is that by the time you're looking at a topic, you're looking at who is Jesus Christ or what is God's kingdom or whatever topic, then you'll be able to remember all those different stories, prophecies, and statements that you've been listening to throughout the day. And then eventually, as it grows, as you do that for months and years, you'll have the whole Bible in your head. It'll allow you to answer questions when people ask you. Read First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. And it will give you stuff to meditate about. When you want to think about God, your head won't be empty. Your head will be full of all kinds of quotations. And then you'll be able to understand what's happening in the world better based on what the Bible says about that particular topic. Another tip is that when we're reading the scriptures, try to understand it as four departments. There's doctrines, instructions, judgment, and divine promises. Those are like the four departments of the truth or the word of God. And the reason why I say you should look at it like that is because it will help you to understand. It's like, you know, when you go to university, it's not just education. Then you, it's all randomized. No, there are departments. There's engineering. There's science. There's mathematics and so on. And by the time you go into a field like engineering, for example, then there's mechanical engineering. There's architectural engineering. And then you go into architectural engineering. And then there are courses in there that will help you to understand it. So similarly, there are doctrines, instructions. Then there are topics on judgment and divine promises. And we actually have playlists which you can check out that talk about that have all our videos that are on doctrines, all our videos that are instructions, and for judgment and divine promises. And you can watch them to have an understanding on how those things work. The doctrines are like the cardinal subjects. Who is God? Who is Jesus Christ? What is God's kingdom? What is salvation? The ransom sacrifice? Essentially, they're the basics to understanding God and His purpose for mankind. 
Then there are the instructions. By the time you know the doctrines, you want to know, how do I really live my life the way God wants me to? Then we begin to talk about things like love, sacrifice, humility, patience, gentleness, meekness, etc. If you read Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, versus the things we shouldn't be doing, mentioned in verses 19 to 21, and 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verses 9 and 10, things like adultery, stubbornness, theft, and so on. So, then there's the judgment, which generally means, if I do the will of God, what will I get? If I don't do the will of God, what happens to me? For example, if we read Deuteronomy chapter 11 and chapter 28, it mentions how if you do this, if you obey me, then these blessings follow. If you don't obey me, then these punishments will follow. And if you read the book of Jeremiah and Isaiah and Ezekiel, it always talked about how there's blessings, many blessings, and then there's also lots of punishments for those who don't obey him. And then finally, there's the divine promises, which are the everlasting promises that God has made to mankind. If you read Isaiah chapters 51 to 66, it mentions a lot of those, how God Almighty would bless his children and uplift Zion, which we made a video previously to talk about, how God will destroy the wicked ones on this earth so that the righteous will have an opportunity to really serve God freely and not be disturbed and distracted and oppressed by those who prefer Satan the devil. So, and then if you also look at the New Testament, it mentions all kinds of promises. If you read 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 13, St. Peter mentioned the new heavens and the new earth. That's another big divine promise. The fact that God would rework the world and restore it to righteousness. And you can, you can make 500 subjects for all four of them. Because just like school, just like university and education, the Bible is a big school. And we... If we go there, as in if we look into the Bible and try to understand it, then the spirits will reveal everything to us. They'll allow us to have access to such knowledge and understanding, the unsearchable riches of Christ. If we read places like Romans chapter 11, verse 13, and Proverbs chapter 2, from verses 1 to 6, so that will be enlightened. And finally, always remember... Many people, they always talk about how the New Testament is more important than the Old Testament. The Old Testament is abolished because, you know, Jesus Christ came and it's the New Testament that matters. No. The Old Testament and the New Testament are equally important. They work in harmony. If you only read one, be it the New Testament or the Old Testament, you cannot understand God. For example, if you only read the New Testament... You would understand who God is, because the New Testament is about Jesus Christ, who is God's Son. It's only when you read the Old Testament that you can understand who God is, because that was where the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and other people like Moses, that's when you can really understand how that personal relationship that a man can have with God works. That's how you understand God's love, mercy justice, discipline, his principles, his wrath, his anger, and many other things. We've made all kinds of videos to explain them. And if you watch them, you can see that there is no difference between the New Testament and the Old Testament. They're the, they're the same. We cite different stories and we link them up with all different kinds of texts all over the scriptures. It's when you read the Bible like it's one book, not like it's you know, 66 different books and only 27 of them, which belong to the New Testament, are the ones we should be reading. It's one book that we study and try to understand in more detail because that is how we can really unlock the treasures of the kingdom. Now, I've been talking as if, you know, the more we study the Bible, the more we'll understand God. I have to note that the Holy Spirit plays a huge role in this. The Holy Spirit is what will guide your meditation process. It'll, when you're reading the scriptures, maybe a text in Isaiah the prophet, then the Holy Spirit will kind of give you an understanding of what that means. If you read Acts chapter 8 from verses 26 to 40, this was, uh, it was Philip who came, but it's like Philip represents how the Holy Spirit works. You're reading a text or you're trying to understand something in the scriptures, then all of a sudden it'll like be revealed to you. For example, you're trying to connect one verse in the Old Testament with one in the New Testament to try to see how it works in our time. And then eventually the spirits will gradually reveal it to you 
so that you then begin to understand it. That's why we should pray for the Holy Spirit. If we read Luke chapter 11, verse 13, because it's so valuable. It'll open up the Bible to us so that we can know how to really let it guide us. As David said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's Psalm chapter 119, verse 105. So, if you like the tips that I've just given you, then give this video a like and make sure to subscribe and apply them when you're studying the scriptures. Take the word of God seriously. Try to study it like you're going to university. Let's really learn what the Bible has to say because I'm telling you, it's more satisfying than any university degree you can acquire or any amount of education years you can spend learning about science. No, learning the scriptures will be more satisfying, and God will fill us with his knowledge, according to Psalms chapter 81, verse 10. Have a great day, and God bless you.